we're going to start using a circle to help us solve our problems. So when we use this circle, it always represents the hole. Whatever the hole in the problem is, is what goes inside the circle. Sometimes we know it, sometimes we don't. Additionally, the numerator and the denominator will be represented as well. The denominator is always going to tell us how much to split our hole up into. So if we had a fraction of 3 fifths, the hole is split up into 5 parts. Each one of these sticks or lines splits up the hole into, in this case, 5 pieces. The numerator changes slightly, so I'm not going to describe it at this point. So we're going to look a little bit more at this idea of the finding fractions when you have a, a set. And what's challenging with these is that every time the fractions are worth different amounts, you're working with different objects, different total amounts, different pieces, and it gets a little bit confusing because the fractions aren't holding their numeric value. It's um, their they were part of a group and it, it can be a little bit confusing to think about so hopefully with more practice and looking at it in different ways we'll continue to figure it out so here I have a bin of juggling scarves there are 12 in here okay so we have our 12 scarves and I want to know what three-fourths of these scarves is worth how many is three-fourths so when we're doing this the easiest thing to do is always find the one piece and in this case, it would be one-fourth. I want to know what one-fourth of this is, and figuring anything else out past that will be much simpler. <clears throat> so we have fourths, so I need to split this into four groups. So I'll put my one here, here, and they're a little bit spread everywhere, but that's OK. And I'll have one pile here and one pile here. And now I can, can just continue to distribute my scarves around. If you have objects at home, I would suggest pausing and just ripping up a couple pieces of paper or having 12 objects of something so you can do this with me. So we've taken our 12 and just equally split it into four groups. I have three here, three here, three here, and three here. Okay, so I have my 12 groups. Or I'm sorry, I have my four groups. So, one-fourth is one of these piles. It's three. That's simple. Now, the question was, what is three-fourths? So, that means I get to take, not three scarves, okay? I get three of the four groups that we have. So, I get this group, that's one, two-fourths, three-fourths. So this pile in my hand is three-fourths. And now I can count this up for my answer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine scarves is three-fourths of the original 12 scarves. So we take our total and divide it by the denominator for our total groups. And then we take the number of groups we were given. Three-fourths gives us a total of nine. We looked at the problem find three-fourths of 12 with the juggling scarves. So to mathematically solve this, I'm going to set up my circle, which represents the whole. And we always need to figure out, do we, knew the, do we know the whole, or are we looking for it? And in this case, we do, because we're finding a fraction of the entire part 12. So now, we need to figure out how many parts to split this hole into. Remember, we look at our fraction, and the denominator always tells us how many pieces the hole is split into. So it's four pieces. Now, to figure out the amount that goes on each of these, it's a simple division problem. It is 12 divided 
into four chunks. We're using division to get the values of these chunks. The information is not in the problem. So I know that 12 divided by 4 equals 3. And we know that when we divide, it has to be an equal value each time. So now we know that 1 fourth is worth 3. Each of these ends is a fourth because we split 12 into four pieces, just like separating our 12 scarves into four different piles. Same process. Now, if we look at the question, it says find three fourths. So in this case, we need to select three fourths of 12. So I get one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. I get all of those. That gives me a total value of nine, nine scarves. Because I'm taking all three fourths and adding them together. So this next example we're going to look at is a little bit different than the ones that we were just practicing with. You were given information about the entire set and then you found a piece of it. Well in this case I'm going to give you information about a piece of this set and you're going to tell me how many popsicle sticks are sitting here. So you can see I have this stack of popsicle sticks. This is the whole set. What I'm going to tell you is that these six sticks you see right here, this is two-fifths of the set. I want you to find five-fifths. So this can be a little bit challenging. The key is to find one-fifth. If we know one-fifth, then we just have to take five of those to get the whole set. Well, I told you two-fifths. So how could we figure out one-fifth? An option would be to take my two-fifths and split it into two groups. If this is one-fifth and this is one-fifth, together we have two-fifths. So we can simply just take our two-fifths and split it into two groups because it's two of the fifths. That's one-fifth. That's one-fifth. So I know that I need five of these sets of three. So that's three, six, nine, 12, 15. If I take five threes, my set should be 15. So there's a set of three, two sets of three, three fifths, four-fifths, five-fifths. So I have my five-fifths and I count them up for a total of 15. So remember when we're doing these the key is to find one piece. If we're talking about fifths it's one-fifth. When we're talking about fourths it's one-fourth. If we're talking about eighths it's one-eighth. It's finding that one piece of the set and you can tell me what a couple of them are, or you can tell me what the whole thing is. But once you know that one, figuring everything out else is a little bit easier. The problem we just solved together with the popsicle sticks was that you were told six sticks is two-fifths, and you need to find the whole set. So I can still set up my circle, but in this case, the problem says to find the whole set. So I don't know the value of the entire set. That's what we're looking for. But I can still use my denominator to tell me how many sections to split the whole into. And in this case, it's five. The denominator always tells us how many sections the whole part, the whole set, was split into. Now, this is a little bit more tricky, but we're told that 6 is 2 fifths. 
Well, if I highlight this one spot right here, what fraction of the whole is that worth? Take a second to think about it. I have my whole. I've split it into five pieces. This one piece I have highlighted is only worth one-fifth. And each piece is worth one-fifth. So, six is not just this. Six is actually two of these together because it is two-fifths of the set. So, this chunk and this chunk together equals six. So how would I figure out the value of each one? Remember, when we know one piece, getting the rest is just repeating that number. How would we figure out this one piece based on the fact that six is two? We can do a simple division, six divided by two. I need to split this six into both fifths. So together, one-fifth and one-fifth equals six. Two-fifths is worth six. Now I can fill in my other chunks because they're all the same. So the last step is find the whole set. How will I calculate this whole? <clears throat> I simply just need to drag in my different threes as a total and they will total 15 because each three adds in to create the whole set.